How is it going guys? So I'm currently in Lanzarote and whilst I'm here I got to dive Europe's first underwater museum, Museo Atlantico. So I hope you enjoy the video, it was incredible to go and dive the museum. So in this you'll hear me talking a little bit about the statues, why they're there, what they represent. I hope you enjoy the video, sit back, relax. My name's Adam and welcome to Naturescope. On screen now is a map for the Museo Atlantico. We were very lucky on the day and were the only boat there, so we got to moor in the boat one slot at the very top right. This meant that we were right by the start of the museum. We then followed the museum round in numerical order and took a look at all the statues. Whenever we move on to a new statue, I'll put the number and name of it on screen so you can come back to the map and refer to it later. We'll first of all show you the entrance sign. I didn't get too much footage of it as unfortunately somebody had carved a phallic image into it. I'm sorry in advance for some of my pronunciation in this video, Spanish isn't my first language, but the first exhibit we saw was Los Holoteros. Holoteros are the small little boats that you can see the children sitting in. They're often made from scrap bits of metal, usually things like oil drums, and this exhibit overall is just in reference to children having fun and creating things that allows them to use the resources the island gives them, which in this case is the ocean. Number two now, and this one's called Immortal. The figure you can see lying on top of the pile of sticks is actually modelled off a local fisherman. Most of the human statues here are modelled off real influential people from the island. Immortal is showing us a traditional Lanzarote funeral, the sea cremation, and shows that the sea is a huge part of death in Lanzarote. For me personally, this was one of the most impressive sculptures on the tour. This is the raft of Lampedusa. This is modelled off a real life shipwreck. It was a raft filled with people from Africa who were fleeing starvation and poverty. They all ended up dying making the trip over. What you may notice about the statue is that the further you go towards the front of the boat, the more likely it seems like the people are going to make it. So at the back of the boat, people are lying down and they're struggling. But at the front of the boat, there's this man who's sat on it, looking forward, looking on the horizon and having a bit of hope. The exhibit was also installed to show that even though this happened years and years ago, this was a real event where a raft was found on El Golfo in Lanzarote, that this is still happening across the world and people are still fleeing terrible things and it's just put there to permanently highlight that this hasn't stopped and it's still an issue. Exhibit number four, Disconnected, really made me think. It shows a couple taking a selfie on their phone. Now once I turn the camera around here, you'll see that they have no faces, which means, you know, they're not really identifying themselves, they don't have an identity. And if you look behind them, you'll see the raft from the last exhibit. It's just trying to explain that we spend all the time on our phones and with technology, but when we look behind us, there's real world issues that still need dealing with. We're on to exhibit number five now, and this is called Crossing Rubicon. It consists of this absolutely huge wall. It's so long you need to see it to believe it. And then there's also 35 figures. These again are all modeled from influential people on the island, from fishermen to restaurant owners to dive guides and everything in between. And it's just an amazing one to see. And they're all walking towards this door that's in the middle of the wall. Overall, this is trying to highlight the pointless damage we do to the planet. They've built this giant wall and there's only one doorway in the middle of it. So what's really the point of it? You could have just walked around the wall. So it's just sort of highlighting that people are walking towards this kind of door of no return and that we're at a real clutch point when it comes to protecting the planet. And if we go any further, then we're gonna to get to a point where we can't do anything, we can't reverse the effects and it just starts to have a negative impact on the ocean. One of the coolest parts of the entire tour now, you get to swim through the door that's in the middle of the wall and it really gets you thinking as you're swimming through it about the irreversible damage we're causing to the planet. Lots of the divers we were doing the tour with complained afterwards that there wasn't much life on there and I thought they were completely wrong, I wasn't expecting anything but when you looked around away from the figures there was actually plenty to see. This was one of the biggest eel gardens I've ever seen, full of garden eels course and it was just incredible and then I also saw this which was this fish 
digging a hole. I don't know whether it was looking for prey or it was some sort of mechanism to defend itself or camouflage itself, I have no idea. But it was really interesting to watch. This is the hybrid garden. And on the one side, it's to highlight some of the really cool plant life you'll see around Lanzarote. Things like cactuses and tall palm trees. But if you look closely at the exhibits, you'll see that some of them have humans that are growing inside them or the plants are growing out of the humans. And this is to kind of highlight that we have these amazing plants that give us oxygen, that give us life, that benefit animals, but we go and cut them down and it only really negatively affects us. I'm sure you're starting to notice here that many of the exhibits are highlighting many of the issues we have with the environment and with humanity. I actually missed number seven, I just didn't see it at all, but this is called abysmo, which from Spanish to English translates as abyss, and it's basically a man looking back through the wall that we already crossed in a bit of disgust and wondering how we've done this to the planet. Number eight is called Portal, and it shows a statue of a girl looking over this mirror. Now, it doesn't look like much of a mirror now, and that's because the sea has worn it down quite a lot, but the overall aim of this exhibit was for you to swim over it and be able to see yourself and how big the ocean looked behind you, but unfortunately, it's a bit past its best. It may need replacing. This is exhibit number nine and it's called Deregulated. And from everything we were told and everything I can find online, it's kind of up to you how you interpret this one. It shows a lot of businessmen all dressed in suits playing on children's play equipment. There's one on a swing there and you can see the seesaw in the background. Now to me, this instantly says that the important people in the world are actually just children who haven't really grown up but are running the really important things, things like politics and business. One of the other interpretations could be that these big businessmen are just doing everything for money and they're playing around with the future of the planet. Number 10 is called Tubularis Hybridos and I'm pretty sure this one is about how future generations should be part of the planet. They've carved them out as these sort of cactus human figures. Number 11 is called The Photographers and I somehow managed to miss another exhibit. This one shows two photographers. One is leaning right against the wall with his camera through the railings and the other one is the one you can see on screen now that's stood a bit further away. And they're photographing what we can see before we pass over the wall. It's showing that photographers catch permanent images of our society and of nature and that we need to change to protect it so it's not just shown in photos in the future. Number 12 is called the Human Gyro and the meaning behind this one is incredibly simple. It shows 200 individually made statues of different people slumped over each other in a circle, some of them are holding hands, and it's to highlight what's going to happen in the future if we don't respect nature and if we don't respect everything around us, we're going to die because we'll run out of those natural resources because we haven't respected the planet. To me, this was also showing that we all have a part to play to stop this. The fact that it was in a ring and that everyone was touching each other and everyone was lumped in together really highlighted that we need to work together to protect the planet and it really made you think. Just as we finished up, this huge shoal of fish passed by, and I thought that was a really fitting way to end the dive. In the description below, I'll leave some links to some more information about the museum and some of the resources that I used to help make this video. I really hope you enjoyed the video. It was really cool to go and dive somewhere different. A lot of the dive you're going just for the marine life and that's what I love to see. But it was interesting to go and dive somewhere a bit different, somewhere that was a bit more, you know, artistic but still had a lot of life to see. If you enjoyed the video, leave us a like. Comment down below if you ever dived the museum. If you did, what did you think about it? What sort of life did you see on there? And subscribe to Nature Scout to not miss any more future diving videos. We've got plenty coming from the UK and across the world this year. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you next time. Cheers.